Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me. My name is Helen, this is the Shrimpy Miggy channel. You're here because you're dealing with hair loss right now and let me tell you, I feel you, I have gone through this myself. It was so super traumatizing. I've got quite a bit of stuff on my channel about what I've done about hair loss and how I've sort of effectively grown my hair back pretty much. I'm really happy with it right now. Um, I'm gonna see if I can show you my old bald spot. Hopefully that's picking up. But my hair's looking really good and I'm really happy with it. So I just thought I would jump on to share because I've learned a lot of stuff and actually this is some of the content that gets me the most views. So obviously you guys are interested in it. Don't miss any more of my content though. Definitely be sure to subscribe so that when I do put up some more stuff about hair loss, which I will do, you get notified. And also don't forget to ring that bell at the same time so that you actually see it. Maybe you've noticed a balding patch on your hair or patches, or every time you take a shower, you get like lots and lots of hair coming out, especially when you use conditioner. That actually still happens to me. I still notice that when I actually use conditioner, the most amount of hair comes out for some reason, and it is scary. It is really, really freaky. When I first started going through quite a bit of hair loss back in October, I was just completely freaking out every time I take a shower. I would actually dread it. I was dreading taking a shower because I know that my fingers would have hairs just caught all in between them. It was super, super stressful. So just stay along with me, I'm going to give you some tips for short term, medium term, and long term. What you're going to do to deal with this hair loss so that you're not freaking out because I know I was freaking out. I am a girl's girl. I have lots of friends, lots of female cousins, and let me tell you, not a single person, not a single woman that I've known has been chill when her hair is falling out. When her hair is falling out, her world is falling down, basically. So if that sounds like you right now, I'm gonna tell you, take a deep breath. We're gonna get through this together. I promise you, I've got some great solutions. Let's get right into them. So obviously I don't think I need to tell you guys that I'm not a doctor and this is totally not a substitute for medical advice. I would strongly urge you when you start noticing a hair falling out to visit your general practitioner for a starter and he or she will get you going in the right direction, maybe give you some blood tests or maybe you need to see a dermatologist or something like that. This is totally not a substitute for medical advice and I'm just gonna assume that you're really smart and you're gonna go and see the doctor. I'm not a doctor. If I were a doctor, I wouldn't be here making this YouTube video. I would be collecting my money at the doctor's office. So anyhow, let's talk first about short-term things you can do. Okay, so your hair is falling out, and so you're gonna go online, and you're gonna be like, Dr. Google, please help me, and Dr. Google's gonna freak you the F out, right? You'll have people like, don't use Rogaine, do use Rogaine, use coconut oil, use castor oil. You're gonna have a thousand of opinions. It's like when you have a baby, uh, you get all this like unsolicited advice, or when you're pregnant, all these people come out of the woodwork and start telling you things that just basically, it's just so much information that you can't process it and it just starts to freak you out. So I'm gonna to talk to you about what you can do on the very short term. So yeah, I mean, sure, you could start using Rogaine today. You could start massaging your head with coconut oil or castor oil or whatever the case may be. Nothing's gonna stop you from doing that. If that's gonna make you feel better, go right ahead. We can talk about some other solutions when it comes to like medium and long-term stuff. But let's just talk about short term. Like what are you gonna do today and what are you gonna do tomorrow, right? So you have some sort of bald spot or thinning spots and it's bothering you and it's visible. So let's be practical about this. Yes, you can try and grow that hair back in, but what I would strongly suggest right now is that you're gonna try and cover it up. There's no use thinking about like, oh, when I was 20 I had such thick hair or like even five years ago I had such thick hair. I see this refrain all the time and it's just not that helpful. It's just not that helpful. Forget about that. You're you, you're right now. What are we gonna do today? What I would strongly suggest is that you figure out a way to style your hair that's gonna just help you get through the next little while. Okay, and that's gonna bring you a lot of peace of mind. Certainly it did for me. And what I'm gonna strongly suggest is that you avoid any straight hairstyle. If your hair is pinned straight, guess what? There's a really simple solution and it's gonna make your hair look much fuller and that is learn how to curl your hair. I went to Walmart and I bought this curling iron for I think it was $12. It was worth every single penny, okay? So you're gonna go out and you're gonna, if you don't have a curling iron, go and buy one and you're gonna put some curls in your hair and strategically tease your hair a bit. There's tons of YouTube tutorials. I have tutorials about how to curl thin, thinning hair. Um, go and check those out, but you're basically gonna put waves in your hair. Wavy hair looks fuller, it just does. If you have really pin straight hair, it's gonna look even thinner than it already is, right? And we're trying to cover things up here. I often see people uh, complain about their loss of hair or think about how their hair used to be and then they don't wanna put any effort into styling their hair. People, this is effortful. If you wanna look good, you have to put effort into it. They look at celebrities and they're like, why can't my hair look like that? And the truth is the celebrities have extensions in their hair or they have hairstylists working on their hair and of course their hair looks bomb because of it. 
For the rest of us civilians though, we gotta work it and so that may or may not include styling it a lot. I would suggest get one of these and uh, curl your hair, learn how to curl your hair. And I've got some more tips as well. So look, hair fibers. So you can go online and you've heard about hair fibers, right? There are these little things. This is Topic. There, this is not the only brand. There are a lot of different brands. I'll put a link in my description box, which is an affiliate link and you can buy through my affiliate link, which helps to support the channel or not. It's like, I'm not gonna be making hardly any money off of it. So it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that you're happy with your hair right now, like tomorrow and like the next day. So what I want you to do is think about covering up those bald spots. So you're not thinking about them and looking at them all day long, okay? so. We've got to get your mind off this because you will start to become obsessed. Get some hair fibers. I don't care what brand you, you, you get, but get one that matches your hair color. This one, of course, is dark brown because my hair is very dark brown. The other thing that I bought, and so I'm not sure if this is available. I mean, if you go to a Sephora, I think they have similar type. That, I don't know if they carry this brand. If you have Amazon Prime, you can just order this and it'll get to you really quick. Or, you know, just go to your local CVS, your local Shoppers Drug Mart, your local drugstore, and, or Walmart which is where I got this uh, curling iron from for cheap and buy this stuff. It is pretty good. This is actually to touch up roots. This is called L'Oreal Magic Root Cover Up. So here it is and it works a charm. You just spray it in like hairspray and that will just cover up any visible spots so that you're not fixated on them, right? Because becoming fixated is probably one of the biggest hazards of when your hair starts to thin, you start to become really, really fixated. Oh my God, my bald spot, my hair is showing, everybody can see my scalp. I don't want people staring at my scalp. First of all, get over yourself. Not that many people care about your scalp, but you care about your scalp, but they're not thinking about your scalp all day long, trust me. But like, I totally get it, right? It's super, super devastating and it's really gonna freak you out. This stuff's pretty affordable. Just get this and spray it on your hair. Be warned though, it does get on your pillowcase. So you'll wanna have a plan for that. I don't know if that means washing your hair at night or um, just using a dark pillowcase or putting a towel over your pillowcase that you don't mind getting stained with a bit of the stuff because it is smudgy and if you touch it with your fingers, it will smudge. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is some medium term stuff you're gonna do. The next thing we're gonna talk about is what you're gonna do in the medium term. So what I'm talking about when I'm talking about medium term is sort of like the period of like, let's say one to two weeks to like a couple months. What are you gonna do to get on top of this hair loss stuff? Because if you let it, it will take over your life. So I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna take too many photos and you're not gonna obsess about your hair too much. This is something you're gonna be effortful and intentional about. What I want you to do is yes, you are gonna take photos to document what's going on because if you do end up seeing a dermatologist, if you do end up even seeing your GP, you're gonna to wanna to have some documentation. It's always helpful when you can show photos I don't know what it is about the medical profession, but generally when you actually have evidence with you, they tend to respond to it. Sometimes when you're just verbally telling them, they hear you. It's not that they don't hear you, but when you have, you know, these people often have a science background, so when you can show them with photos, they're a lot more responsive. So that said, you're gonna take photos. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna allow yourself one photo every week, not more, okay? You're not gonna be taking photos from all kinds of different angles and all kinds of different lighting. You're not gonna go to the gym and take a photo there. You're not gonna go somewhere else at the mall and take a photo there, or take one from your car. You're not gonna take them everywhere. You're gonna just pick one spot with pretty good lighting, maybe near a window, and you're gonna take the photo yourself, or if it's somewhere you can't see that well, get a, someone to take a photo for you. You are gonna allow yourself one photo of the same part of your hair, once a week, not more because you will start to go totally cuckoo and you'll get really fixated if you allow yourself to take photos in every single different situation, every single kind of lighting that there is out there. You know, you're gonna be like wanting to take one right after you take a shower and like it's just gonna go on and on and on and you will become obsessed and you don't want that, right? So the other thing we kind of have to discuss if we're talking about medium term, like what you're gonna do is Rogaine. I decided to use Rogaine and I got the all clear to use it and you can go ahead and watch. I've got a video that seems to be really helpful for people about women's Rogaine. So go ahead and watch that if you're curious about how I put it on and if you wanna see some before and after photos of what my hair looked like before and after. I love the stuff, you know, but it was a decision to make. It was a decision like, are you gonna stay on, are you gonna use it? Because once you use it, you can't just like use it a few days and decide and this isn't really for me and think it's gonna work. If you start using it, you kind of have to commit to using it because apparently if you stop using it, your hair will fall out and that sucks. But you know, I'm someone who's been on different kinds of medications. I've been on a medication for my thyroid for a long time and I just don't have a problem with staying on a medication. For, for indefinitely, I'm, I'm cool with that. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, but you have to make your own decision and you can make that with your healthcare practitioner. But if you do go the Rogaine route, 
I just want to let you know that you have to be patient, right? So Rogaine is not something that's going to work in one week, two weeks, three weeks. R read the actual literature that they give you. The literature, I think, says something like three months and that's pretty accurate. And if you think about how hair grows and growth cycles about hair, you'll realize that you're not going to use it and you're going to have like a nice halo of fluffy baby hairs after like three weeks. Maybe the odd person does have that, but generally speaking, hair just grows at a certain rate and you're not, and Rogaine doesn't necessarily speed up the fastness of it. It's supposed to just stimulate the actual hair follicles into growing. So definitely have a look at that and read it carefully and then, you know, make your own considered decision. But just know in the medium term, you're probably not going to see a lot of hair growth because I would say longer term is about three months and three months is the point where you're going to start to see some Rogaine coming in. Uh, but let's talk about what you're going to do for the long term when it comes to hair loss. Let's tackle that. So a lot of the women on the Facebook group that I am on for women dealing with hair loss talk about different things that they've tried and haven't tried. And quite a few of them mentioned that they just wish that they would have skipped everything like Rogaine, you know, rubbing their head with this, Nioxin shampoos, all the stuff that's supposed to help that they wish that they just skipped all of that and just went straight for like toppers, wigs, extensions, stuff like that. And I've heard this enough times to think that there is definitely something in it. So for long term, let's talk about if your hair is falling out, what, what you're gonna do. And so I just want you to know things are not hopeless. You can have helper hair, as people call it, and that's totally cool. And people are just like, they really resist this idea that they're gonna use any like extensions and stuff like that. And I just say, why? They're there, they're so affordable nowadays, although some of them can be very expensive, but you can definitely find less expensive ways to do it. I made a whole video about making uh, inexpensive extensions from hair that I bought at Sally's Beauty. So that was a lot of fun and I do wear that to give me really long hair and really full hair sometimes and so it's just, it's kind of a blast. When you open your mind to the idea of wearing like a hair topper or some maybe extensions that go from underneath and maybe also just spraying the balding area to just make you look like you have more hair or just skipping all of it and just wearing a wig, it's actually kind of fun. People are really resistant and they think that they're like a failure or they think they're gonna look like a little old lady with a blue wig on or something like that and that's so not the case. There's so much great hair and I just wanna tell you, all the celebrities you think have really big hair or really known for your hair. Let's just take, for instance, Ariana Grande, right? She's known for her big ponytail. She's so open about using like extensions. She has a whole song that's just like, do you like my hair? Thanks, I just bought it. So she, if she's totally open about it and she's like a young girl in her 20s, the rest of us can wear helper hair as well. And there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. I would say do not resist. Start looking into it right now so that you know what your options are. Have a look, there's like, I have a wig that's like $38 and it looks amazing. It looks better than my own hair. It looks super cute. I have extensions, you know, I've never bought an actual topper, but had this not, had the Rome gain not worked, I was totally gonna buy a topper. I don't care. Don't get too hung up on like natural hair. Nobody cares anymore. People have fake nails, fake boobs, Fake hair is honestly the least offensive of the many, many different fake things you can have. It is just totally harmless and actually can be lots of fun and I would strongly suggest you just play around with it. So those are my tips for helping you with the short term stuff, the medium term stuff and the long term stuff. And I just want to tell you, you know, don't feel hopeless. There's always hope. The way you feel today is not the way you're going to feel in like six months. I bet you if you fast forward six months, even if your hair situation has changed, you'll learn how to cope with it. And so you will come to accept it because the problem right now is you're not at a level of acceptance one way or the other. You're just in a level of panic. So once you move past the panic into some into the world of acceptance and it will come whether you get on top of this or whether it's still a struggle for you, the acceptance will eventually come and I swear things will be so much easier when that day comes and it will. All right, everyone, I hope this is super helpful. Please do consider giving me a like on this and be sure to subscribe for more content like this and check out some of my other videos. I'll link them up in the description box. I really hope this was helpful. Lots of love to all of you and uh, happy hair growth. We'll see you soon, bye.